Oh, it should be coming in any minute. Okie dokie. Okay. When, uh, How are you doing? Oh, I'm mighty fine. When six uh, hits, I'll start us. I'll get us going. And then I'll introduce okay. you. And if he's not with us at that time, you just fill in, say a few things. Then one of the things that I encourage you is to talk about your other products. And you've been doing that, and I appreciate it. Um, we need to let yeah. them know. And he will too. For good, sure. yeah. good, good, good. We need to let them know about the other products you all have. Okay. He was the founder of all of this, so <laughs> you're getting legend himself. He's won so many awards, and oh my gosh, he's he saved so many lives, and he'll tell you the numbers. Good. Unbelievable. Do you remember having him one before? Like oh, yeah. Like two years ago. Oh, yeah. I remember. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to really not talk too much. I'm just going to make sure that they know where to get his books and also how to reach out to us to get scheduled. And I'm going to make sure everybody knows that the tongue analysis I'm not charging for. And, you know, hopefully that will generate a lot of traffic. You bet. And then we'll open it up and see if there's anybody that has questions. And we'll take it from there. Super. He loved that. He loved that. All righty. Well, let me kick back here uh, four more minutes. Okay. <sighs> Hello, Tony. Hudson. Thank you for coming. Hello, Mr. Holiday. How's uh, Galway Girl doing? Hello, Carla Maria. Welcome to you as well. Hello, Sabby. <laughs> Hi, Stephanie. DJ. Good evening to you, my friend, all the way from Scotland, mate. I'm hoping you're feeling better. Give us a report, DJ. Are you feeling better? Hi, Nix. Expialidocious. Now that's a good <laughs> name. You're from the UK. Well, welcome, UK. You're okay with me. Get it? That's a joke. Hello, Robert Jones. Hello, my friend, and hello, my friend, to you, too. Hey, CK. Hi, Ines Hernandez Flores from Puerto Rico. Boy, I guess you guys are being flooded like crazy right now. God bless you, Puerto Rico. God bless you. Hey, Rick G. Hi, Gwen. Hi, Serrana Ramos, if I'm saying that right. Uh, from New York City. Oh my goodness, from New York. <laughs> we pray for you. <laughs> I mean, it must be tough living in those foreign countries, huh? <laughs> Chickadee, love that name. Hi, Steve Good. Galway Girl is on her way. Good, Mr. Holiday. Riches blessings. I like that. We're two minutes away, family, from starting. Hey, Shelly. All the way from Australia, mate. Well, I'll tell you what, Shelly. Tonight, we're going to make sure that it's a Donnie Brook. It's going to be a ripper. It's going to be a ripper of a UB2B tonight. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I know a few Aussie uh, statements or, or slangs. Uh, Reggie boy. What's up, buddy? Good to see you. Expiatidocious Blue for Air Force. <laughs> Brittany, how are you? DJ, he says, J just out of uh, the theater, everything was a total success. Praise God. Way to go, DJ. That's the way to get those kidney stones out of you. Congratulations, my friend. Congratulations. They not only got rid of my kidney stones, but they got rid of my kidney, too. Hey, if I can't laugh at myself, nobody else is allowed to. 
Hi, uh, uh, Carol, is it? Uh, t uh, Tessie, if I'm saying that right. Ah, Shelly says, good day, Frank. Good day, mate, to you too, Shelly. <laughs> I watch uh, Aussie Gold. You ever watch that? Aussie Gold. I love that program. I love the shows. I love hearing from you guys. Hi, Keith Benson. Hello, Captain John. Good to see you, sir. I'm doing well. Alrighty, you guys, it looks like it's time to start. So, we ready? Three. We are. Two. One. Go. The recording has started. Greetings, family. Welcome to another one of your Frank 26 UB Tubies. It is September the 21st of 2022. I greet you in agape love. We are KTFA. It stands for Keep the Faith Always. KTFAlways.com. Before we do anything, we go to God's throne room by the blood of Jesus to ask for his guidance for our ub tubi. Let us hold hands and pray. Abba, we enter your throne room with the greatest respect, asking you to put a hedge of protection around us tonight so that we may be in a safe environment. Is she talking to you? Bless us in all that we do tonight, Father, and those that are with us, that they may learn about these products that can be of great help to them. I love you. I thank you for your son. And it is in his name, Jesus Christ, that I pray. Amen. 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 Well, family, I welcome you again. And yeah, we're, tonight we're going to be uh, having our Wednesday infomercial. And it happens to be that we have uh, Dr. Randy from Longevity, uh, who is bringing in Dr. Wallach that is going to be uh, talking to you tonight. He's the founder of Longevity. Longevity is a very successful nutritional uh, product that... Uh, that has a lot of their products that have been of uh, great use to you. And family, right now I'm going to turn this over to uh, Dr. Randy, uh, who in turn will then uh, introduce you to Dr. Wallace. And when they're done, if you have questions, fire away. Fire away. Put your questions when we're done. Don't do it while he's talking, okay? Write your questions when you're done, and we'll see if we can answer them. Then when we're done, uh, we go into our update, our dessert. And tonight I will be reading you what Eddie has to say in from the last two nights. So, without any further ado, Dr. Wallace, are you there? I am here. Hey, Doc, I'm sorry, good, I'm glad you're there. Now, Dr. Randy, are you there? I am, I, I've got us all connected. Good, the floor <laughs> so. is yours. You go right ahead and introduce our special guest. The floor is yours. All right. All right. Thank you so much. And, and hi, everybody. Some of you have heard me on the show now for a couple of years, and this is the second time we're bringing Dr. Wallach on, Dr. Joel Wallach, who is just absolutely legendary in the naturopathic world, in the veterinary world, and he's written so many books. You can actually find those. We'll give that site out. Uh, but I'm actually, it's interesting, I'm looking at a copy that I have, uh, copyright 1999 of one of his best-selling books called Dead Doctors Don't Lie. And at this time, it was dedicated to the 60 million Americans that at that time had received the 90-minute uh, audio cassette tape. So now it's over 600 million copies between the cassettes, the uh, CDs, DVDs, and the books. Dr. Joel Wallach, welcome to the call. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Randy, and um, thank you to our host. And um, I'm very excited to be here and share. I'm the host. Outstanding. So, you know, Dr. Wallach, these listeners have heard me for two years, and <laughs> as a naturopathic doctor, <laughs> yeah. So they're probably tired of hearing me, maybe. But as a naturopathic doctor, I had to align myself with a company that I knew would help my clients get better. And I looked at so many companies out there, and they were filled with synthetics and fillers. And, you know, mostly the people were just formulators, and they really had no experience. And you have all the experience. So please tell everybody how, you know, you got started your background give that, lay the whole foundation, and welcome. Okay, well, thank you, uh, Dr. Randy. Well, basically what makes me different, I have a degree in agriculture. My major is in animal husbandry and nutrition at uh, the University of Missouri. I have a veterinary degree from the University of Missouri. Um, actually, uh, 1963, I wrote my first scientific paper. It was um, a mass die-off. Um, 
was a um, uh, Christmas holiday and all the professors were gone. And I'm working my way through veterinary school um, by working in the pathology department. And this farmer brings me 50 dead lambs. The day before, uh, 500 lambs were in perfect shape, eating, doing their noise and jumping in and out of the feed bunks and running around and everything normal. He wakes up the next morning and 500 were dead. Okay, what happened? And so he brought me 50. And make a long story short, I found out that the, all the neighboring farms had been uh, heavy fertilizing with nitrates to get their hay to grow more. And uh, the nitri- uh, nitrates and nitrites were going into the pond where the sheep were drinking. And it had uh, caused a problem with their thyroid glands. And the night they all died, the temperature dropped in central Missouri during December from, and there was like 50, which is not unusual, down to 16, and they all died of hypothermia. And I wrote that up and got it sub- uh, submitted to several different um, scientific journals and got published in 1965. And I was on my way to South Africa to work on the White Rhino Project. There was only, um, let's see here, 350 white rhino left uh, in the Umphalosian and Shuli Game Reserves in South Africa. Marlon Perkins, an old mutual Omaha Wild Kingdom show, sent me there. I worked with him at the St. Louis Zoo. So he sent me there to save as many as I could. So I, I caught 200 of them using a, a drug that was 10,000 times more important than morphine. And the darts were the size of a AAA battery. Shipped them back to the United States. And today there's 21,000. So we were very successful because we built all these um, um, uh, uh, various um, uh, wildlife parks for them. And so we went from 200 to 21,000. So we're very, very proud of that. It's kind of like a Noah's Ark thing. That's amazing. Isn't that amazing? Mm-hmm. And then uh, I came back, and of course, uh, they used that information of that the mass die over the 500 died one night uh, to get a $25 million grant from NIH. And what they wanted me to do was find, they called me back from South Africa, they wanted me to find a canary in the mine. They wanted me to find a zoo animal that was sensitive to the same pollutants as humans were. So if those animals were dying in the zoos in the big cities around the world, People knew to evacuate because they were like the canary in the mine that the old coal miners used to use. That was the whole purpose of the thing. To make a long story short, at 10 years, I did 20,000 autopsies, 17,000 of change, over 454 species of animals, and, and 2,000 and something, almost 3,000 humans. And uh, it's in the Smithsonian Institute as National Treasure. Uh, W.B. Saunders, the, the um, publishing house for um, medical textbooks, bought the rights to publishing it. And um, they sold for $25,000 each, my thesis, which is still in the Smithsonian Institute of National Treasury. We're very proud of that. Uh, if you go to, to, to the Smithsonian Institute and want to um, see it, they're going to give you armed guards because people keep wanting to steal them. Well, now I have a summary of that. It's called Epigenetics, the Death of the Genetic Disease Transmission. So we created a, a new science to replace genetics called Epigenetics. And it's a summary of my thesis, which sells for 25000 the, the summary sells for $25, so everybody can afford the $25 summary epigenetics, okay? And it goes on and on and on, many more projects around the world and many more autopsies and things. Uh, for instance, I'm the guy who got rid of cystic fibrosis, found the first non-human case of cystic fibrosis, supposed to be a genetic disease in humans. I'm the guy who got rid of muscular dystrophy. We were, gonna, we were going to uh, get... Um, um, Jerry Lewis in on it. He had worked for the Muscular Association for 50 years. Uh, he had raised $2.5 billion for them for the research because they thought it was a genetic thing. And um, I, in October of 2011, I was receiving the Klaus Sarge Award. And so he asked Jerry to be the featured speaker and introduce me because I had found the cause, prevention, and cure of the cystic fibrosis in, in, in monkeys and humans. And the Muscular Dystrophy Association summarily terminated him, put a gag order on him, and shut down the telethon. Okay, but we were going to take all our young Jimmy people and put them into saving the, the Muscular Dystrophy kids. Well, we've done it without them now. Okay? And then um, we also were able to eliminate sudden death syndrome. Now, the doctor said, you may remember this, doctor said that sudden death syndrome was caused, cis, was caused by mothers laying on their babies and suffocating. That's what the doctor's view of it was. <clears throat> it turns out they're dying of hypertrophy cardiomyopathy heart disease, which is a deficiency in a single nutrient. And my lawyer, John Zemore, and I, we petitioned and we sued. We petitioned and we sued. And we finally got the uh, NIH to force the manufacturers 
of uh, baby farm, those infamil, similac, and the like, to put these nutrients in there, and so you don't hear anything about cystic fibrosis anymore. You don't hear anything about muscular dystrophy anymore. You don't hear anything about sediment death syndrome anymore, because us forcing them to put these nutrients in there it eliminated those three terrible diseases in kids. So we're very, very proud of that. Okay, and of course so we uh, um, are in 80 countries. Uh, we have 5,000 products. We deal with over 600 different diseases, and I could go on and on and on uh, more, you know, interesting disease things. But I do want to talk about what's going on now. Okay, so how much time do I have? Ten minutes or five minutes? <laughs> to talk? You have an hour, Doctor Wallach. Okay, well, let's, well, I want people to be able to ask questions, so I'll talk about ten more minutes, and we'll throw it open. Okay. 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 Uh, well, <clears throat> right now we're in deep trouble uh, because of the supply chain issues. Um, uh, the um, all this stuff with the businesses shutting down and people being laid off and it's a horrible thing going on here the price of food skyrocketing and so on and so I want you to think about this um, this is what it cost us for these diseases all of which are nutritional deficient diseases okay Alzheimer's disease is not an autoimmune disease not a genetic disease it's a simple nutritional deficiency disease um, 25% of the brain weight and 25% of the spinal cord weight is cholesterol. And we don't have enough cholesterol, you get Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's disease was caused by statin drugs. Okay, it spiked in 1960 when they came out with statin drugs. Uh, $305 billion a year is spent to treat the symptoms of Alzheimer's disease in the United States alone. $305 billion. Um, that's not to prevent it or cure it, that's just to treat the symptoms. Arthritis, okay, um, there's a long story there. But the, the chart of it is uh, each year we spend $626.8 billion uh, to treat the symptoms of arthritis in the United States alone, not to prevent it or cure it. Uh, type 2 diabetes, we spend $342 billion a year just to treat the symptoms of it, not to prevent it or cure it. Heart disease, we spend $316.8 billion uh, to treat um, symptoms of heart disease, not to prevent it or cure it. Obesity, we spend $210 to $260 billion a year just to treat the symptoms of obesity, but not to prevent or cure it. Cancer, we only spend $190 billion. I was very surprised at that. Well, that's because they treat cancer with chemotherapy and radiation for, say, three to six months, and either you live or you die. Uh, arthritis, they treat you two or three times a day for 50 years, 75 years. That's why it's so high, okay? And then uh, high blood pressure, $131 billion a year just to treat the symptoms, not to prevent or cure it. MS, multiple sclerosis, $85 billion a year to treat the symptoms, not to prevent or cure it. Um, that, that, that there's another 1.2 billion we spend on the, um, let's see here, let's see, um, 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 the, the kids' disease, the Gambare syndrome, it's MS in kids under the age of 25, Gambare syndrome, all right? And then asthma in kids under 10, we spend $80 billion a year just to treat the symptoms, not to prevent or cure it. Kidney dialysis, $24 billion a year, not to prevent or cure it, just to pay for the dialysis, $24 billion a year. And that's where your money's going, okay? Now, autoimmune diseases are all caused by consumption of gluten, wheat, butter, rye, and oats. The only people who are not sensitive to gluten are dead people. Nobody should be eating wheat, butter, rye, or oats, okay? Um, we, it causes lupus erythematosus, fibromyalgia, rheumatoid arthritis, irritable bowel syndrome. Um, let's see here, Crohn's disease, celiac disease, diverticulitis, metabolic syndrome, uh, central nervous system demyelinization, okay, and as a result, uh, we get uh, Parkinson's disease, again, Alzheimer's disease, uh, psoriatic arthritis, psoriasis, mm, MS, Gambare mm, syndrome, Graves' disease, which is a, a disease of the thyroid uh, caused by um, not being able to get the nutrition into the thyroid and, uh, and people eating gluten, okay? And uh, this is like crazy. The metabolic syndrome is obesity, diabetes, high blood pressure, many other diseases. And this was spiking um, at, at the turn of the 20th century. Now, this was caused by technology. Obesity was caused by technology. Um, up until 3 o'clock in the afternoon, Monday, September 4th, 1882, on Pearl Street in New York City, in the bluff where we're looking at the construction of Brooklyn Bridge, um, everybody was cooking with uh, wood and coal as the fuel. Um, grandma was taking the wood ashes and coal ashes, putting them in our food as spices. We were getting minerals that way because 98% minerals and only 2 or 3% carbon. She's putting all these 
ashes from the wood stove and also the fireplace is coal um, into the gardens and the, all the vegetables are sucking up all these minerals. We ate those vegetables, we got our minerals that way. But when we went to electricity by the year 2000, or excuse me, 1900, by the year 1900, okay, guess what? Um, uh, obesity was spiking like crazy. And that's because everybody was had pica, which is a symptom of craving, 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 craving because they're minerally deficient. So for 18 years, nobody was getting wood ashes or coal ashes anymore. And so by 1900, everybody was obese. And doctors said, stop eating animal fats, eat more whole grains, okay, and everything will be fine. Well, the more whole grains they had, the more gluten they ate, the worse everything got, okay? And so you have to get rid of the gluten. And we came up with programs for 600 different diseases. We have 5,000 products. And so we're busy, busy, busy right now, as you can imagine, okay? And so everybody, and this is what I take, I don't have any problems, okay? I'm 83 years old, I don't have any problems, but I take these things just so I don't get any problems, okay? Uh, you want three eggs twice a day with soft yolks. Little kids want to give them uh, one egg twice a day with soft yolks. They need that cholesterol to maintain the brain and spinal cord, okay? And then um, also no fried foods, no processed meats, no oils, no gluten, no wheat, brown, rhino, no sugar, no carbonated drinks. And then, um, I take uh, two healthy brain and heart packs from a full dose everything twice a day. The healthy brain and heart pack has 215 nutrients in it containing the 90 essential nutrients as a healthy start pack. MSM, uh, I take two bottles of that per month. Yeah, that. That's uh, three breakfast, three lunch, three dinner time. And they're designed to support and promote maintenance repair of cartilage, ligaments, tendons, connective tissue, disc protrator vertebrae, uh, and including connective tissue in the walls of the arteries and skin and tendons and ligaments and all that kind of stuff and valve, heart valves, uh, collagen peptides, okay? That's more collagen from fish and poultry and sheep and beef. I take a scoop of that in my morning drink, scoop of that in my evening drink, vitamin D3, three of those twice a day. Our synaptive, there's three things in synaptive that make your brain and spinal cord work better. I take uh, three of those twice a day. Um, let's see here. I also take the memory effects. I take three of those twice a day. The de-stress capsules are designed to deal with congestive heart failure and uh, mental problems and emotional problems. Uh, our rebounders are sports drink with 100 nutrients in it. It has 75 minerals in it, 25 vitamins, amino acids. Most sports drinks on the market have um, uh, mostly just sugar and, and caffeine, okay? And we, we have, like I say, all these things uh, we take. Um, and, and don't forget, again, the, the um, sports drink rebound has that 100 nutrients in it, 75 minerals and 25 of the um, vitamins and minerals. We have powder, we have sticks uh, in a rebound. But we also have cans, but the cans have some carbonation in it. So I like to pop tops, put two cans in the refrigerator at night with the tops popped. They're, uh, they're flat in the morning because all the carbonation is off gas. That way I can have one with breakfast and one with lunch. And I get another 100 nutrients that way. So that's kind of our basic thing. We deal with over 600 different diseases. We have formulas for everything. Um, and so with that, uh, Dr. Randy, I'm gonna throw it back to you. Okay, so basically, you know, that's a lot of information. So I put some notes in the chat if anybody wants to go read that. But, you know, what we do, Dr. Wallach, is we promote the body's built-in, natural, God-given ability to fix itself. So. You put all of this together. It's amazing. It's legendary what you've done. I want to just kind of go back to where you were talking about the lambs, just to really help people understand why those lambs died. They were getting food with nitrates, and we on the no list is no nitrates or no nitrites. What do those yeah, do to the body? Those are in bacon and other meats. That's correct. And, of course, so they were getting the nitrates and nitrates in the water as well as in their food and when the temperature dropped thyroid couldn't maintain healthy uh, body temperature and they all died of hypothermia and i wrote that up and it took about six months because i had to go from from um uh, uh journal to journal to journal to journal until i found one that would actually publish it because they're all freaked out <laughs> okay <laughs> Okay, so then I also wanted to talk about, you know, you talked about the shipping and different things going on in the country. One of the things that was big in the news this year was formula. 
and there was a shortage of formula and people didn't know what to do and there's more nutrients put in dog food than there is in baby formula what is our alternative okay well we have kids toddy we actually made a formula when when they had trouble um manufacturing the baby foods here in america we came up with our own baby food called kids toddy okay it's a replacement okay for infamil and similac until they we finally um protested uh, we protested, we sued. We protested, we sued. We protested, we sued. Um, and, and finally, uh, the federal courts ruled that they had to put these nutrients we were screaming about into the baby formulas. And that's why we were able to get rid of cystic fibrosis, muscular speed, and sentiment death syndrome. But women who are breastfeeding their babies, uh, for instance, um, in 1990, the number of sentiment death syndromes was 135 to 145 per 100,000 normal births in America. Today, it's 15 to 20 per 100,000 old births. So we've dropped it by more than 95%, okay, by putting all those nutrients in, in the baby formulas. And so even if the mother is breastfeeding the babies, and let's say she's eating gluten, she's not absorbing nutrients even if she's supplementing. So it's still safe to give babies that are being breastfed one meal a day, our kids toddy with the EFAs and our cherry mint. So those three things, kids toddy, EFAs, and, um, uh, our cherry men's, and that's going to give them everything they need to be safe and not die of sudden death syndrome, not get uh, muscular dystrophy, not get cystic fibrosis, and all that kind of stuff. Because if the mother is eating gluten, even if she's supplementing, uh, she's not going to be able to absorb it. Exactly. Okay. So I, I wanted to cover those topics and kind of bring that back around and have you clarify that. And then if somebody is considering getting pregnant, how far in advance should they be on the nutrients, mother and father? Okay, well, again, uh, I've autopsy so many embryos who were died from birth defects and so forth, and went back and did histories and all the research and everything. There are no genetic diseases. There are no genetic birth defects. There are no autoimmune birth defects, okay? so. Um, the only way you can guarantee that you're not going to have a baby born with birth defect is for the mothers for at least um, six months before conception to be gluten-free and also uh, to be taken the 90 cents of nutrients for six months before conception. You know, when you've missed two cycles, you start saying, oh, I better start taking some vitamins and minerals. It's too late. The baby's going to have all kinds of problems. Okay, not good. And then high blood pressure, low blood pressure, diabetic, okay. blood sugar issues. Okay, well, blood sugar issues, of course, you still want the 90 cents of nutrients, so we, uh, we have two ways of doing it. If you don't have any other issues, if you just have kind of a pre-diabetes situation or, or diabetes and you're young, you can have what we call our healthy blood sugar pack, okay? And if you're already, if you're already on blood sugar medication, don't hold you off the medication, but as your blood sugar begins to drop, you can slowly reduce the medication based on the numbers. But we have what we held, have is the healthy blood sugar pack, which is a healthy start pack with the 90 essential nutrients, 16 minerals, 16 vitamins, 12 minutes of three fatty acids. And then the Sweeties um, uh, tablets, okay, have the nutrients that are necessary to prevent and reverse type 2 diabetes, which makes up 98% of the diabetic population. Okay, high blood pressure um, is not a genetic thing. It's not an autoimmune thing. It's a definitely due to a nutritional deficiency. So again, you need the 90 essential nutrients based on body weight. Uh, you can take the healthy brain and heart pack plus whatever other nutrients you need based on what other problems they have. But for the high blood pressure, I would throw in three twice a day per 100 pounds of body weight of the Ultra Daily Classic tablets. It'll support a healthy blood flow through um, through blocked arteries and through um, uh, and, and support healthy blood pressure. Uh, we take people who are on dialysis six days a week. For 10 years, they were on dialysis for 25 years because they didn't want to get kidney transplants and had high blood pressure. You put them on those regimens, and in two weeks' time, they dropped their dialysis down from six days a week for 10 years down to three days a week. And then in two more weeks, they're totally off the dialysis uh, because of the 90 essential nutrients and the ultimate daily classic tablets. We do this really, literally, hundreds of times a month all over the world. How many people do you think you've affected, Dr. Wallach? even on a daily basis? Oh, on a daily basis, we affect billions because we're in 80 countries. We have 60 warehouses around the world and we have not been negatively impacted because it's much cheaper 
for people to pay for these nutrients out of their own pocket. And they will pay the wholesale prices. We give them the wholesale prices of our products. If they get an auto ship, I will pay the shipping. And of course, with some of our liquid costs are heavy, the shipping is expensive. I'll pay the shipping if they get an auto ship. And if they run a young Jimmy business out of their home, they get tax breaks. And so they get tax breaks. They pay wholesale for the products. I pay for the shipping if they get an auto ship. And their young Jimmy business is a willable asset. In other words, so they're not just doing this like they work for some company. No, 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 no. They're building an empire for their family. And so when their time comes to retire or they pass away, um, their family or their church or whoever they put in their will is going to get their business, gets the business, and they should have been teaching them how to run it and take the products and all that kind of stuff so it's a smooth transition. Outstanding. So for those listening on the line, if you want to reach out, there's several different ways, and we're going to open it up to questions here in a minute, but 844-275-1056 is how you reach me. With any questions, Frank's website is Frank. 26. <laughs> what are you saying? Okay, yeah, I'll put it in the chat. Uh, frank26.youngevity.com. Frank26.youngevity.com. And, and here's the thing. Most of the conditions that you are going to the doctor for, for most of, like everything pretty much, is easily treated. It's just easily treated. You just got to feed the body what it needs. Frank, do you have any questions? Uh, well, first of all, I want to thank uh, Dr. Wallach for coming because uh, a lot of people are, are commenting that this is a great show. It's got uh, good information, powerful information. Uh, they're very pleased. Family, one of the things that I learned in these last uh, three years having to deal with cancer is that I, you know, we are what we eat. We are what we eat, and we lack what we don't eat sometimes. Unfortunately, our farmlands have been destroyed. Dr. Wallach was talking about nitrates and whatnot. The pesticides, the nitrates, the, the fertilizers have become so out of control that the land that we used to depend on to give us our food here in the United States it's been raped of nutrition. To be honest with you, you don't need to supplement on a daily basis. You just need to eat right on a daily basis. But how many of you do? None of us do. It's difficult because they make it difficult. Number one, our land has been raped of all of its nutrition. The only place you're going to get good nutrition right now is from the ocean. And there you get a lot of minerals compared to vitamins. But it's sad. We count on our food. There are five major industries. Tyson, for example, takes care of the meats. There's an industry for fruits. There's an industry for cattle. There's an industry for chickens and poultry. There's an industry. There's five major ones. You think you're going you to take away their money? You come up with a better product than they have that's healthier, you think they're going to allow you to, to, to sell that? The idea is to make money at any cost, and our pollution of our land is our cost. We don't need to supplement, but we don't eat properly, so therefore we desperately need to supplement. I was showing you this box because Dr. Wallach was talking about you know the pack this is a, a pack that has uh, these uh, items, the, these nutrients right there. This is a well-balanced pack. Look at all of the nutrition. Look at that, all the vitamins and minerals. And, and, and these are vitamins and minerals that from a natural source family. You go to a pharmacy, you go to a, 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 you know, a health food store, take vitamin, I don't know, take vitamin D off the shelves. If you look down at the bottom, it'll actually say, keep out of reach of children's hands. Why? It's a vitamin. And if it's organic and natural, it'll just, you know, be absorbed and I'll use as much as I need. I don't, 
I mean, I can overdose on vitamin D if I overdo it, but I'm not going to do that. But why do the vitamin C, vitamin E, why do all these you know, products at the health food store say keep out of reach of children's hands? Uh, because they're mainly made out of oil-based derivatives. They're not making it from natural things, from food itself, per se. No, it's cheaper to make it out of oil. Everything is made out of oil nowadays. It's a sad situation that we're in. We are what we eat. And our food industry in the United States, actually around the world, has forced us to eat the way they want us to eat. And like Dr. Wallach was saying, one of the major tragedies is uh, after we started using electricity, we started to eat differently. Go to Walmart. Go to Kmart. Go anywhere and take a count in your head. Count how many obese and overweight people there are versus slender, ordinary body people. There are so many, <laughs> I mean, fat, overburdened, just obese people. And sometimes it's not their fault. We are what we eat. And what are we forced to eat? Garbage. Therefore, we supplement to help us along the way. The gluten is the most dangerous thing in the world. Dr. Wallach was talking about that. The gluten that comes from our wheat coats and covers the lining of our intestine. That lining has billions, or excuse me, millions and millions of little villi. They're like little projectiles that, you know, little fingers. You ever see an, a, a carpet anemone from the ocean? It's got all that little, those little, little, those little villi there. That's what our intestine looks like. And when we eat glutens, it coats all the, the villi. It feeds the wrong bacteria. Candidus is an example. You don't want that. But the gluten is feeding the candidus. The candidus is saying thank you, and then the candidus infects your body. And that's just one bad bacteria. It is important to eat properly. And we are forced not to. Supplementation is extremely important. Now, I'm going to look back here and see if there's anybody that has any questions. I've been talking, hoping that you would post some questions. So far, I don't see any. Don't let this man leave us without asking him a, a, some questions, family. Consider your situation. For example, Dr. Wallach, are you there, yes, sir? sir? Yeah. I thank you again. Allow me to reach across the phone and shake your hand. I, <laughs> thank you. I dealt with bladder cancer, um, and I was stubborn for almost three years until a, another tumor came around. But during that time, they gave me two to four months to live. I lived almost three years before another tumor popped up. I took a lot of supplements, and Longevity was just one of the products that I was taking. I took these products because I knew what they were doing. They were helping me, and the doctors were very, very confused. Why aren't you dead yet? I'm not going to tell you that Longevity kept me alive. I'm going to tell you that I took Longevity while I was trying to stay alive. Dr. Wallach, um, I talked to a lot of people that have gone through what I've gone through. They took out my bladder. They took out my lymph nodes. They took out my prostate. They took out my ureter. They took out my right kidney. I think I was scheduled for a lobotomy next. They were going to take out my brain, but I stopped them at that, po at that point. That's a joke. I'm being facetious. What would you say for people that have prostate cancer? It is such a, 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 a dominating um, illness in men nowadays, and I think it's because of what we eat. What would you suggest for somebody with prostate cancer, Dr. Wallach? Okay, well, you get an A+. Plus, uh, all cancers, including prostate cancer, are caused by what you eat, what you don't eat. Um, so again, we have a list of the bad foods. Everybody's got to get rid of the bad foods. Uh, when you have prostate cancer, no fried foods, no processed meats of any kind because of all the nitrates and nitrates in them. 
absolutely no oils, no olive oil, no coconut oil, no salad dressings, no cooking oils because they oxidize and turn into trans fats, which causes cancer. And then uh, you need to stay away from gluten. No wheat, no barley, no oats. The only people who are not sensitive to gluten are dead people. As you point out, um, there was a little finger like Bill. I make your intestine look like a shag rug. I call it a shag rug. There you go. And um, <clears throat> when you're eating gluten, um, those villi go away, and your, now your intestine looks like a plastic tube. You lose 90% of your absorptive surface when you eat gluten. So I, when I give my slide presentation, I have a picture of a normal small intestine and a picture of one that's been afflicted with gluten. It's very dramatic. And then you also need to uh, take and avoid the, uh, let's see here, uh, the gluten, uh, no uh, carbonated drinks of any kind, no sugar. All the bad stuff's got to go. But then, per 100 pounds of body weight, and this is something I learned, uh, sir, that, you know, people, they want the nutrient. Yeah. It, it, is it vitamin C uh, or B1? What is it I need? No, that doesn't work that way. That's why they're not successful. You need to take them all. Take them all, all the ones that are required. And then we have what we call secret sauces, which are um, like sweeties for diabetes. Uh, we have the MSM and collagen peptides for uh, arthritis. Um, we have uh, for uh, brain problems, memory and Alzheimer's disease, we have the synaptive. So this is to be added to the 90 essential nutrients. <clears throat> and that way you're gonna be successful. If you just try to take one nutrient and you're still eating gluten, you're not gonna be able to absorb that nutrient. And we see this a lot uh, with people, say a 65 year old man goes to the doctor and he says, Oh, you have diabetes, and they put them on metformin, which is an oral form of insulin. Uh, they come back a month later, and their their blood sugar is even higher. Are you taking that metformin? Yes, sir. Oh, you must have type 1 diabetes. And they'll have them come in and give them uh, insulin injections after that. Well, they knew that. That doctor knew that. Uh, metformin is not going to be absorbed because they're, they've been eating gluten. Uh, oatmeal for breakfast every morning. Okay, pancakes and waffles. Um, pep, let's see. Uh, things like um, uh, all kinds of bread, okay, even drinking beer made from wheat, okay? And so those kinds of things were causing them not to be able to absorb the nutrition, and that's why they had problems. So uh, it's, it's very, very, very important to deal with these issues. Yeah. Um, uh, we are what we eat, no doubt. Yep. And... Um, Dr. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, Frank. Well, when you finish, Dr. Gonna... Randy, I do have a lot of questions now from uh, our, our family here. <laughs> yeah, I see them all coming in. Um, Dr. Wally, can you explain why no oils ever? Yeah, well, oils oxidize and turn into trans fats, heterocycamines, acrylamides, which cause cancer. Okay? And so um, you have to appreciate that uh, when you go back to, to the first supplements, what were the first supplements? Salt. Salt. You know, people living on the coast, they would boil salt water and get the salt, and of course it had other minerals in the salt water, but they would go to the inland, 100 miles inland, and they would sell that salt because people didn't have access to salt inland. Well, the people on the coast were living longer and, and healthier because they're getting all these minerals naturally because they're eating seaweed and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and so um, that's why we came up with so many products, we put uh, seaweed in them. Like we have one, it's a liquid, it's called Z-Radical. And we have one that has a pill, uh, you know, for thyroid issues, it's called Ocean's Gold. It has eight different seaweeds in there. Not only do they get iodine, but they still get all this other stuff. I get people call me all the time, do you have iodine? I have, I have a goiter problem, so I want iodine. Well, what about the other night? No, no, I just need the iodine. Okay, so they're not thinking correctly and because they need all these other things because uh, you're not gonna live long enough for the iodine to, to help the, the thyroid gland. So you need them all. And it's kind of like, do people put dirt from Texas in their car and hope that there's oil and gasoline in it? No. Okay, they put uh, high quality oil, they put high quality gasoline, they put an antifreeze or radiator. People treat their cars much more scientifically than they do themselves. They treat their car much more uh, for, for longer mileage and everything than they treat themselves. We have all these red warning lights all these diseases are red warning lights. You just can't take, you know, that, that one nutrient. You gotta take them all and extra of that nutrient. That's how it works. 
Well, Dr. Wallach, we have some questions now. Uh, and because okay. it, it's a handful, go ahead and rapid fire your answers uh, for the following. Sure. Here we go. What is good for a man's large belly? And by the way, family, most of these questions that you're asking, it all goes back to the same thing. It all determines on what you eat. And in this case, how much you eat. So once again, what is good for a man's large belly? Okay, well this is a form of obesity, okay, so they need to get rid of all the bad foods. Again, that bad food list, no fried foods, no processed meats, no oils, no gluten, no wheat, brown, rye, no no sugar, no carbonated drinks. Then they need to have one healthy brain and heart pack, you know, the 215 nutrients, including the 90 per 100 pounds of body weight. And then they need to take our keto shake. It's a meal replacer, it's not to add to a meal, it's a meal replacer. And the keto shake, um, so it'll be seven per week, one meal a day. It doesn't have to be the same meal every day. But they will lose a half a pound or two pounds a day, and their belly will flatten out. Uh, I'm 83 years old, and, you know, I'm weigh 142. I'm five foot six, and I have a flat belly. Most people think I'm in my late 40s or early 50s when they look at me. Uh, but I'm 83. And so it's, it's very easy to um, get rid of the fat and prevent the fat. Well, that's good. Okay. Here's the next question. Can you help, I think it's pronounced celiac disease? Yeah, yeah celiac. Yeah, celiac disease. Okay, celiac disease is um, related to irritable bowel syndrome. Okay? Mm, okay. Celiac disease is, is a disease in the intestines caused by gluten. And so we're talking about, uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see here. We're talking about irritable bowel syndrome. We're talking about... A Crohn's disease, celiac disease, diverticulitis, okay? All those are the same diseases, different locations in the intestine and different degrees of severity. Gluten, 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 gluten. Take the 90, get rid of the gluten, celiac disease goes away, you know, in two weeks. How long do you have to stay off of gluten forever? How long do you have to take the 90 forever? Forever. <laughs> Next question from Sharon. What would be good for Edison's disease? Uh, Addison's disease, of course, um, has to do with the adrenal glands, okay? okay? So what we need to do, again, is get rid of all the bad foods, and then they need to take the um, uh, healthy brain and heart pack, one per 100 pounds of body weight. They need the synaptive, okay? Take the synaptive. I take three of those twice. It's two bottles a month. That'll be good for the brain, the spinal cord, the adrenal glands. They also need to eat three eggs twice a day because all these hormones are mostly made from cholesterol. You cannot be on a cholesterol-restricted diet and be taking um, any of these uh, statin drugs when you have Addison's disease, that kind of stuff. Okay? Don't forget the three eggs twice a day with soft yolks. Okay. The next question is, can stage 3 kidney disease be helped with this program? Oh, absolutely. We take, Like I say, we get people who are getting dialysis <clears throat> Six days a week, they've been on dialysis. Uh, they've been on dialysis three days a week for 25 years. Same person, and so you get them off all the bad foods. Get them on the 90 essential nutrients. You give them the ultimate daily classic tablets, and they will support healthy blood flow through blocked arteries in the brain, the heart, and the kidneys, and support healthy blood pressure. But also uh, uh, help support blood flow into the kidneys, and the kidneys will work properly. And usually, we're able to within say uh, two to three weeks. Uh, able to drop them from uh, dialysis six days a week down to two or three days a week, and then another two weeks are totally off of dialysis after 10 years of being on dialysis six days a week. Praise God. Um, I'm excited about these questions. I want to answer them, but I'm having fun listening to you. <laughs> Here's another one. What does it mean to be insulin resistant? Okay, well, insulin resistant means that you have high blood, uh, excuse me, you have high blood sugar, you have um, uh, diabetes, but you're probably taking an oral form of insulin and you're not responding. So they're saying you're, 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 you must be resistant to, uh, to that insulin because you're not responding. Well, that's because you've been eating gluten and you're taking an oral form of insulin. So you gotta get off the of gluten in the beginning, you can go ahead and take injectable insulin, and it'll work perfectly. You can't escape that because you're injecting it into you. But they're all, always talking about oral, okay, when they're talking about insulin resistance, usually middle-aged people. Uh, and doctors know this, 
okay? They're not dumb, okay? Doctors are not dumb. And so, and so they, they put you on an oral um, insulin like metformin to begin with because you're looking for people who will not respond. They'll be insulin resistant. Oh, we got to do more some heavy duty stuff here. So they really give them the, you know, give them the all this injectable stuff and have to come once a month so they don't get, die from their insulin resistant and all that kind of stuff. And what you have to do is ask the doctor if he has a kid in college and if, if tuition is due. Copy. Uh, this one's kind of <laughs> e. This one's kind of easy. Someone is asking, what do we have to do not to? not to have a knee replacement. Well, Patty, when you stop and listen to the doctor, it, it all goes back to the inflammation in our body. And that inflammation is uh, mainly caused by the glutens that we eat. Stop eating bread. Don't eat a pizza made out of wheat. Eat a cauliflower uh, pizza. Find, uh, th there's a lot, of, a lot of ways to substitute bread. I personally love almond flour. Oh, you coat that on a piece of chicken, and it's really good. Put, put it in some little butter and toast both, both sides, and it's delicious. And that's a very healthy, the butter, the vitamin E, a whole lot, not, not margarine now. You notice that we know what we're looking for. Somebody here is asking the question, Dr. Wallach, uh, well, how do you get rid of all the glutens that we have now in our bodies? Stop eating them and it'll dissipate. Stop eating it. Yeah, there you go, sir. <laughs> Stop eating and it'll dissipate out of your body, family. Um, let's see, how can you eat without eating so much gluten? Well, that, that question was already answered. It takes a willpower. Yeah, read labels. Say again, sir. Read labels. Read labels, exactly. I said it takes a willpower. Now, let's combine those together. You know how long it takes me to go shopping for food? I read everything now. I don't trust them. Every aisle is made out of either corn syrup, corn this, corn that. I mean, it, it's sad. It's not the next aisle. Everything is made of soybean this, soybean that. That messes up men's hormones. Anyways, what, uh, what can you do for Parkinson's, doctor? Okay, well, Parkinson's disease is... is thrown in there with Alzheimer's disease and, and that kind of stuff. And so um, uh, what we do for Parkinson's disease is get rid of all the bad foods, okay? Get rid of all the bad foods. And then they have to take uh, three eggs twice a day with the soft yolks. And then they need the synaptive, three of those twice a day. Don't forget uh, one healthy brain and heart pack for 100 pounds of body weight. Um, and uh, de-stress capsules, uh, three of those twice a day. Uh, also, memory effects, take three of those twice a day. <clears throat> and Parkinson's disease goes away. Beautiful. Beautiful. Someone is asking, uh, what products can take? What can you take to clean the gut? Once again, we go back to the origination of how we started. You are what you eat. Eliminate things that you should not have in your gut that can sit there. Eat a lot more fiber. You can have a lot of fruits and vegetables into your diet. You want to be careful, don't overdo, because they have fructose, which you know, you don't, we don't, you don't want to overdo any type of sugar for that matter. But how do you clean out your gut? Eat properly. Do not depend on, okay. a, la on a laxative. Do not. Doctor, go ahead. Well, you know, as you say, we need to insert one thing here. Uh, they probably should get the book, Rare Earths Been Cures, and go to chapter 10 and 11, page 272, and learn how to get the hair analysis and get it to the laboratory. Um, and don't forget to put the check in because the lab won't run the test. There's two charts with it. It tells you all about your nutritional minerals, where they're at. If you're all down below the absorption line, you're not absorbing, that means you're eating gluten, okay? Uh, some of them will be good, some of them won't, won't be bad, some of them won't be there at all, so you know what to do. But also there's a second chart with all the toxic minerals, so lead and mercury and uranium and all that kind of stuff. And so it's once a year, everybody should get a hair analysis. You can't find this stuff out by a blood test. Only a hair analysis will do that, okay? And so then when it comes to, I apologize, we are talking about uh, um, uh, gluten. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, well, the gluten, they got to stay away from gluten. And, of course, um, they, they will do well, okay, for lupus. I get rid of fibromyalgia, get rid of rheumatoid arthritis, 
uh, rheumatoid arthritis is a nutritional deficiency arthritis with a secondary infection uh, with a bug called mycoplasma, which is killable with an antibody called minocycline. So you take minocycline to kill the bug. You take our healthy bone and joint pack and rheumatoid arthritis, I don't care if you had it for 40 years, it'll go away in two weeks. Okay, irritable bowel syndrome, Crohn's disease, celiac disease, diverticulitis, all those are very simple. Uh, Parkinson's disease is where we were at. Again, uh, three eggs twice a day, okay? And then uh, three of the synaptive twice a day, two healthy brain and heart packs per month, we'll go saying twice a day. Uh, don't forget the MSM, uh, two bottles a month. And Parkinson's disease goes away. It's not autoimmune, it's not genetic, it's, it's a simple nutritional deficiency. That's beautiful, and it's so true what you're saying, but we have to have the discipline to get out there and eat properly, to get the knowledge. Um, doctor, there are many questions now. It got out of hand. Uh, I don't know if we can do all of these, but here I'd like to read something that a gentleman by the name of Tyrone out of Scotland, he just posted, you know, family, I've lost 7.2 stones in five months and my eating has changed dramatically my surgeon says uh, to me to lose weight and and that was to keep me out of the refrigerator that was the exercises i i was doing <laughs> exercise is important but not as important as food family that's right that's absolutely right um there are many questions uh, from dementia uh, uh, hemorrhoids, uh, uh, it, my goodness, um, talking about uh, oaks and barley, uh, I'm going to stop, Dr. No Pichu oats, no barley. No oats, no barley. They're part of the gluten issue. No oats, no barley. There you go. Please uh, explain, Dr. Wallach, why the carbonated beverages are bad. I was just going to ask okay, well, him that. I was just, I saw that from Al Schwartz. I was just <laughs> going to say that, Randy. That's amazing. We're on the same channel. What do you think, uh, Doctor? Right. Why, why are carbonated beverages bad for us? Okay, well, they neutralize stomach acid. The good Lord put T cells in our stomach to make stomach acid. We require sodium chloride salt to make hydrochloric acid. And we need hydrochloric acid to absorb minerals. We need hydrochloric acid to keep bugs out of our stomach. We need hydrochloric acid to digest food. And so um, you do not want to do anything that's going to interfere with your with your uh, T cells' ability to make stomach acid. Here's an interesting question from uh, Brian. How long after you stop eating all the bad things will your gut heal? It doesn't, it doesn't take long. What do you think, doctor? Well, again, be patient. I always tell people, give me 90 days, which is three months. Nice. But usually you'll see benefit in, say, a week or 10 days. And usually in four to six weeks, you see major, major benefit. And you might not have any clinical symptoms anymore. You might have normal bowel movements, no belly pain, all that kind of stuff, no gas. That's all gone. But if you were to do an examination, you might find you still had some 25% of damage there. So it's going to take a a couple of weeks or a month or so for it all to go away. But you cannot go back to the old ways. I mean, you know, again, you need oxygen forever, you need water forever, you need the, the, the nutrition forever, and you need to stay away from the bad stuff forever. Is protein water a good choice for, you know, for hydration? Protein... Uh, are you talking about... Well, you probably you means protein like pro water. protein drinks probably. No, versus like okay. versus like Gatorade that concentrates on salts and sugars and oh. you know vitamins. Well, yeah, and we already talked about that. Yeah, we already talked about that because you know we have the, the rebounder sports drink with a hundred nutrients. Okay, and all these other sources of hydration, I guess is the word we're looking for. Hydration um, is is dangerous because they put all as you say they put all the sugar and gluten and all kinds of other stuff in there. Uh, so don't depend on those things um, to keep your intestines healthy and happy, and don't depend on those things for hydration. Remember, every year in America, 500 to 1,000 young people under the age of 25 die while they're playing sports because they drink those types of drinks. That's interesting. Someone is asking Dr. Randy and you, what was the name of the shake 
for the meal replacement that you you mentioned. What was the name of it? Are you talking about the total meal replacement box? Yeah, yeah it's a keto K E T O. Gotcha. Remember that the reason why people become obese uh, is because they are deficient in minerals and their body forces them to look for minerals and they develop a behavior called PICA, P-I-C-A, you can look it up in any dictionary. It's a an irresistible urge to eat, uh, no matter how much you've eaten. Some people eat six, eight, ten meals a day because they have that PICA because they're merely deficient. And that's why they're 300, 400, 500, 600 pounds. And um, we get them on the program and get them with extra minerals or extra minerals, you know, like a rebound sports drink. And within a couple of days, they start losing a half pound to two pounds a day. And half their food is left on the table. Say, well, why aren't you hungry? You have a cold or something? No, I'm just not hungry anymore. Because they're getting the minerals that their body was looking for for 10 years. You know, we're going to have to end. It's almost 7 o'clock. But let's do this last one because I've been looking at all of these questions they are good. They are good. Before I ask you this question, golly, there are so many questions. Uh, why are you putting them up now, family? <laughs> um, Dr. Randy, Dr. Wallach, would you like to come back and visit us again? It'd be an honor. Yeah, I'd love to come back again. It'd be an honor to work with you, sir. I'll tell you what. Next Wednesday, every Wednesday I do an infomercial Next Wednesday is already taken. How about uh, the following uh, Wednesday, two weeks from today? We'll bring you back because they want to know about, can you help them with hair loss? Can you help them with probiotics? Oh, can, you can we help with hair loss? For 45 years. You can take people that are bald for 45 years, and in two weeks' time they start growing in hair, and in two more months they have a full head of hair like they were 12 years old. I'm, I'm an Indian. Uh, I'm Mexican. You know, I'm half Spanish and half Aztec Indian. Uh, Indians, we don't have much hair. Can you put? Can you get hair on my chest? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> the only hair on my chest is the hair that falls out when I comb it. <laughs> Anyways, well, doctor, well, here, here, here. Yeah, there you go. Here's the last question that I find interesting. The problem is, it looks like I've lost the question. Hold on. What is the solution? Yeah, I like this one from Lynn. What is the solution for edema and congestive heart failure? Um, that's a good question. The accumulation of water because okay. uh, our perfusion is not working as well. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, in inefficiency, inefficiency of the heart, okay? Yes. Insufficiency of the heart function. So uh, none of the bad foods, no fried foods, no processed meats, no oils, no gluten, no wheat, no barn rhinos, no sugar, no carbonated drinks, even the diet one's got to go. And then one healthy brain and heart pack, one healthy brain and heart pack for 100 pounds of body weight. They weigh 150, two healthy brain and heart packs. They need to get two bottles a month of our de-stress capsules, capital D like David Dash Stress. Take three of those three times a day. They need the Ultimate Daily Classic tablets, two bottles of that so they can take three of those twice a day. And um, congestive heart failure. Oh, I also want to throw in the, the um, MS so it can deal with the heart valves and so forth. But... Um, the edema and um, the um, uh, all the stuff going on with edema and the heart uh, goes away. Excellent. Well, uh, thank you, Dr. Wallach, very, very much. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to hold up this piece of paper here. This is uh, our website, and that's Dr. Randy's phone number. You all know my phone number. Uh, it's 419 419- Two eight three, two five five two four one nine, two eight three two five five two. Doctor Randy eight four four, two seven five, one zero five six eight four four two seven five, one zero five six. When you call her, tell her that you're with KTFA, so she takes uh, good care of you and whatever discounts or whatever they may have, and uh, that's our our site. Uh, www.frank26.youngevity, young and then jevity, G-E-V-I-T-Y dot com. It's been an honor, sir, and it's been a pleasure, Dr. Randy, to have the both of you with us. Let us start with uh, Dr. Randy and then uh, Dr. Wallach. Any last words, uh, you two? Just make sure that you 
sure that when he comes back out, if we do get him scheduled for, looks like it would be October 5th, that you come out with everybody and, and have your questions ready for Dr. Wallach because you're getting information that you will not find anywhere else. That's true. So That's true. please well, take it out to that show. What we'll do, Dr. Randy, is I will go back to the 21st today. Two weeks from now, I'll go back to our UB2B on the 21st, and I will look for these questions because it's you know it's it it stays permanently in our, our archives. So we'll look for all these questions and we'll we'll ask them and we'll answer any more other questions. Uh, Dr. Wallach, any last statements, sir? Well, uh, just uh, again, stay away from the bad foods. Make sure you're taking the 90, just like you put oil in your car and antifreeze and gasoline in your car. Um, do not you cannot get everything you need just by eating well. Nutritional minerals do not occur in a uniform blank around the coast of the earth. They occur in veins like gold and silver. And then also, um, in 1936, the U.S. Senate came out with a with a, a horrible statement. It was, it was U.S. Senate Document 264. They said American soils no longer have sufficient minerals in it to support human life and longevity. And that's so true, and it's so sad. We mentioned it earlier. Our land has been raped. It's been raped by the desire to make a dollar, not to make people healthy. Thank you, doctor. Both of you doctors. Thank, thank you kindly you. for being with us. God bless you both. God bless you. And thank you, everyone, for listening. Thank you, Dr. Wallach. Thank you, Frank and Jan and everyone for coming out. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. God We're bless. Very honored to have you. Bye-bye. Well, okay. family, you should be very, very, very happy and excited. In two more weeks, we'll bring them back, okay? Have your questions ready. As you can see, these people are very proficient. They're very sharp. They answer questions quickly, easily, uh, without any hesitation, without double talk. Listen to what they have to say. If they suggest to you something that you cannot afford, well, I can't afford, you know, two, three hundred dollars a month in buying supplements. Uh, ask them if there's another package that they can give you uh, that would help you to get started. We have Longevity, and like I told you before, we have other companies that uh, represent nutraceutical products as well, too. But each one of these companies specializes in their own. Uh, check out what, uh, what Longevity has. Go to the website, go to our form, click on the banner, and look at all those products. It's a beautiful company with beautiful products to make you beautifully healthy. Thank you kindly for being with us tonight on our study, or excuse me, on our infomercial about Longevity promo. Oh, and we'll bring them back uh, in two weeks. For right now, we are going to talk about the uh, Iraqi dinar. And what I'd like to do is uh, take you uh, to our Fireflies report. Because... Things are quiet, and the reason why they're quiet is because the leaders, at least two of the leaders of Iraq, are not in Iraq. Yeah, uh, as you know, Kazemi uh, today is in New York uh, at the United Nations, and he's supposedly going to meet with Biden. Um, I don't foresee that, uh, that uh, the United Nations uh, nor the United States is going to suggest anything to Kazemi. They have nothing to suggest. They got enough problems of their own. It's, uh, it's ironic for somebody, like Jesus said, why do you complain about somebody that has just a little a little back in your eye when 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 you have a big speck in your eye that's blinding you i um i'm excited about the conditions in iraq right now they are the most peaceful conditions that i've seen in decades they are the mo most co co cooperative, the most kumbaya, the most shoulder to shoulder. I I've never seen such leadership coming from Iraq's leaders. They were always 
cowarding themselves to Iran. They were always stealing from themselves because nobody was stopping Iran from stealing. Corruption spread within the Iraqi officials themselves. Doggy eat dog. I don't care about the citizens. Well, it turns out that we do have leaders that do care. Mustafa Galay, the governor of the CBI, Kazimi, uh, the prime minister, and uh, Sadr. And that's just three. You're going to find out dozens more that are going to be coming out of the woodworks very soon. You'll find out what they did in this whole year for the government of Iraq. And the last time that we were together, I told you that what we're looking for now is for a seated government. I'm looking for the GOI. And if we have a completely formed GOI uh, presented to us by Kazimi, then you have a budget. And if you have budgets uh, for this fiscal year, well, by George, then you have the projects in it too. You have the white papers. And if you have the white papers in the budget of a government of a stable country, my goodness gracious, then there's a very good chance that the reforms that require the white papers uh, are funded. Because they told us that the reserves are out of this world. <laughs> They're gold reserves, the money that they have brought back. It's crazy. They're constantly, almost on a weekly basis, telling you, we found another oil well. You, your whole country sits on oil. It, you can plant the flag of your country anywhere and oil will squirt out. So they are in a fantastic position to what? Uh, to proudly, boldly go out beyond, beyond oh no, that's Star Trek. Uh, to, to, to go and tell the international world, we're Article 8, we're international, we don't have any restrictions on our currency. You can bring your currency into our banks. Our banks are now modern and ready to go. Yeah, nobody's going to touch your money. We protect it. Oh yeah. Our banking system, what you got? What, 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 Spain, uh -huh. what you got? Uh, Austria, uh, what you got? Germany, what you got? USA, what you got? Guess what? We got much better than what you got. Our banking system is so far advanced, whew, we can reach the moon and back. And other banks around the world basically are very envious of us. We are way, way advanced in the technology of our banking structure, uh, in the relationship of our banks with other banks around the world, way, way ahead of, this, you know, of, of others. And the reason why, family, is because uh, they're ready to introduce a, a new currency to their citizens. So this chronology that I just laid out to you um, is not an opinion. Uh-oh, I better... Do, uh, hold on, hold on. Let me hit rewind. Hi, welcome to another one of your Frank 26 UV tubies. Everything I say tonight is in my opinion. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Let me change it. Okay. Hi, welcome to... Uh, <laughs> Everything I say tonight is in your opinion. <laughs> Everything I say tonight is in your opinion, okay? I don't know nothing. And it's your opinion because you see it. You see the chronology of what I just told you laid out. It's there. It's obvious. So what's the next thing that we're looking for? Have we failed you? Have Walking Stick and I failed you yet? I'm sure we have. But not that often. So what's the next thing that we're looking for? The formation and the announcement of the government of Iraq. And what happens after that? You just heard me give you nine points of what would happen. I hope you wrote them down. Now what I'd like to do is uh, take you to uh, our Fireflies report. And we were together on Monday, so there's no need to read you on Monday. Maybe the last thing on Monday, because you know, you know how I like to overlap. Here we go, Monday. Monday, 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 Monday. Monday, Monday, da, 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 Monday. 
All right. Mm. Wow. Monday was a lot, family. I don't know if I want to read all that all over again. Yeah, it was a whole lot. Do you want me to read it to you again? Monday's report? Uh, I don't know. It's up to you. Refresher. <laughs> get, 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 I like when Frank does the... <laughs> Trish says, I like the color on him. <laughs> you guys are supposed to be here for a study of the dinar. <laughs> Not to look. <laughs> oh, you silly people. Just for that, I'm going to go back to Monday and read it all now. So there. <laughs> Actually, I'll start with a second report on Monday. Good morning, Mr. Frank. Monday, 1029 a.m. in the morning. Hey, we see today the framework is talking about getting ready with, uh, to meet with Sadr. I don't think so. Sadr will not give them the time of day. And his delegation tomorrow uh, or Wednesday, uh, they say they want to talk to Sadr about political issues. And they are saying that under the table, there have been some talks that have been going on to help solve this. I don't know, Mr. Frank. We don't believe that Sauter is talking to anybody under the table. We wait to see if Sauter meets with them, meets with them too, probably also. Also, uh, the uh, U.S., the framework can't fight their way out of a wet paper bag. Remember that? Okay. Maliki said that there are foreigners coming uh, into Iraq uh, to spread lies uh, on, our new, on our news. How ironic. You are the foreigner that's coming into Iraq to spread lies. He's on his own news channel. We don't really watch his channels anymore. I say to him, Eddie, that's a good report. I want you to stay with Kazimi's news channel only. That's what we do here in the United States. We only listen to OAN uh, because the other channels are all communist influence. Uh, Newsmax is also pretty good and Fox sometimes. Now, as far as Sauter meeting with the framework, that's not true. Um, it is true that he is having secret meetings, but only with the leaders of Iraq. The framework can only dream, Eddie, to be a part of those meetings, but they are not. They are not right now. They are not in those meetings now. Ironically enough, their time will come but only when Kazemi is ready to deal with them. They are the last on a, on, a, on a long list, a very, very long line of investors, and deservedly so. Kazemi is also correct about foreign invaders. Uh, Kazemi? Oh, I should have said Maliki. But uh, anyways, uh, Mal Maliki is also correct about foreign invaders because... There is a difference between foreign invaders like him. <laughs> there is a difference between foreign invaders like him versus investors that are coming into the uh, into Iraq. Uh, the same thing here in the United States, Eddie. Our borders have led to over two million terrorists coming in because of our poor leadership in America. Eddie, what I am very happy about is that the leadership of Kazemi and Sadr prevented any riots in the streets leading into a civil war. Like I told you, son, we didn't think that Iran had the potential to fight back, and they did not, did they? Also, the holy pilgrimage is occurring right now, preventing any civil war. God willing, Walking Sticks Friends Satellite Banks will be opening in a couple of weeks, and so will hundreds of others around the world representing the CBI. Let's see where the governor of the CBI is at at that time, and let's see where Kazemi's government is at at that time. Uh, yesterday, we start the day at uh, 8.21 in the morning. 
Uh, Kazemi is in America uh, to meet uh, with high officials. And uh, back here, uh, Sauter is saying that the framework is just full of lies, corruption, and la, 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 la. <laughs> Sider also said on television that he will never, never agree to anything. What I tell you? What I say? The articles. Oh yeah, we're we're meeting with us. Sorry, we have secret meeting. No, you're not. Bunch of lying buffoons. Look at Eddie. As Sider tells citizens, I'll never meet with these traitors. Never. Never. They can say, they can lie, they can do whatever they want. All they're going to do is just talk to the hand. Talk to each other. Talk to each other. When you're done, fall over. But you will never infect our country again. Sider says that he will never agree to anything with the framework until Maliki is first no longer a part of our government. And Sider says Parliament must dissolve now. That's now that the Shiite religious yearly event closes down and everyone gets back to their to their lands uh their to their places uh mr frank watch for demonstrations to come back hard it is possible they have been retreated so far back they are so embarrassed they are so disorganized. There is no leadership. They don't even know what to do next, you know, who to steal from next. And when Eddie says that um, their place, he says, watch for demonstrations to come back hard. Iraq is getting on the verge of a civil war. Many on the streets feel that there's just no other way. Parallel. Parallel again with the United States of America. Constantly. Do you notice that? You notice me constantly pointing out to you, look, same thing happening here, same thing happening over there. You think that's a coincidence? <laughs> Who's winning in Iraq? The enemy? No. Who is going to win in the United States of America? The enemy? No. Less than 50 days. Uh, to get back their places, watch for demonstrations to come. Here, I don't think I showed it to you. It is possible. This is the boomerang effect. This is the slingshot effect. This is the recoil effect. It is possible that Iran will do one last hurrah, one last charge, one last attempt at the cost of anybody's lives. I don't know. It's their style, it's their pattern. But their holy leader is dying. That is a... That's a wrench being thrown into the, into the mechanical workings. That man dying, in my opinion, it's the reason why we don't see any violence in the streets right now. The holiday that they just finished had a lot to do with it. But now this man dying. So I don't think that what he's saying to me. Watch for demonstrations to come back hard. Iraq is getting on the verge of civil war. Many of us on the street feel, Mr. Frank, that there's no other way out without help. And we, we're getting help from the UN, but that's a bunch of blah, blah. And many other international countries are also willing to step in and help. But what good does it do now? To which I said to him, uh, yes, Eddie, but none of them, none of them will help. They just want to be a part of your reforms for their profit. 
Stay with Sadr. Stay with Kazimi. Wait for their next orders. Wait for their next orders. Today, this was yesterday. Today, Eddie, Iranian citizens fought back. Five police officers, five Iranian police officers were killed in the streets by the Iranian citizens because the Iranian police killed an innocent woman. They don't respect women. They dislike them. They cover them up. They don't let them talk, vote, say anything. Yes, Mr. Frank. Today, today, 10, 16 in the morning. Now we're at uh, today, 10, 16 in the morning. Oh. Um, today, 10, 16 in the morning, we see a lot today. What's up, Eddie? We see a lot today. The United States of America sent a lady. Uh, they say that she's uh, an assistant to the Secretary of Defense to discuss relations, military, such as training and sharing intelligence and providing equipment. Really, Mr. Frank, what an insult. The, all of this as talks in New York are going on. We then see the CBI governor talking today how, now listen carefully, this is the CBI governor. Hey, I don't care about Malachi. Sada, you take care of things. Because he needs to go out there and punch a, a bozo in the nose and then come on back. We got a lot to do here, okay? I'm <clears throat> I, the governor of the Central Bank of Iraq. <laughs> Is this thing on? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> it, it's working? It's turn oh, oh, I'm sorry. There you go. <laughs> it's on. <laughs> Woo! Loud noises here. Uh, I like to announce to the Iraqi citizens that I'm the governor of the CBI, by the way, uh, Mustafa Galay. Hey, what's up? What's up? <laughs> okay. I like to announce today. Today, by the way, today, what? Uh, to uh, Wednesday? Yeah, well, it's actually Thursday for us. <laughs> gotcha. I like to announce today to the Iraqi citizens how I have set up electronic payment cards. They're international. <laughs> you get it, citizens? A wink, a wink. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm not done. I'm not done. Sit down. Sit, sit, sit. Electronic payment cards. They will be a big. <laughs> but did I say big? A big. <laughs> They're going to be a big benefit for you Iraqi citizens. Yeah, I did this for you. But the governor, uh, uh, me, Mustafa Kale. Uh, and you know what I've done already, okay? So I got these cards. They're going to be a big, in case I didn't mention that. It's a big benefit to the private sector. You, uh, you, uh, so that you all can, uh, you, 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 so you all can push payments internationally. <laughs> uh, what? What? What do you mean, who's going to want your money internationally? Get him out of here. What are you, Democrat? Get him out of here. Okay, so uh, by these cards, okay, so uh, we're going to push it so you, can, uh, uh, so you can make international payments with these cards and also domestically uh, by these cards in our markets, yeah? Like, for example, how would you like to use, oh, DJ. Thank you, DJ, for your financial contribution. If anybody feels that they want to reward us at the bottom of the chat, you have these little tabs, and we are honored and, and grateful for any financial contribution. Yeah, I got all your monetary reform that I've explained to you. Remember when I talked to you about the 18 machines? Well, it turned, and by the way, I am ad-libbing here. I'm ad-libbing, okay? I'm adding to it, okay? Well, you're going to be able to use these cards there, and also in the markets in your malls. What do you mean, what malls? We got plenty of malls. We're not a war and torn country. Get him out of here, too. Got it. How'd they get in here? Uh, in the malls. Uh, so, uh, yeah. And also, in any store here in Iraq. You ready for this? Any store in the world. <laughs> yeah, to get the citizens into this to push 
You got it? Yes, yes, yes. I'm trying to tell you something. Hurry up! Uh, to, to, to push the system. Uh, they are doing interviews and talking about the cards and private sector saying th that the citizens are also to use these cards and to learn about the advantages. This is all part of the monetary reform program that they're giving us on a daily basis now. Uh, here, you can, you can kind of see a little bit of it there. So, yeah, pretty cool, huh? Let me see. Must have been run to church. Well, okay. Uh, speaker. Okay, there's another one. Uh, okay. It looks like I'm starting to bore you in there. Uh, so, I'll speed this up. We're almost done. Give me five minutes and I'll say goodbye. Uh, they are pushing these international payment cards to us. Uh, they tell us to use them in the markets, in the malls, in all the stores to get the citizens into this. They are pushing the system that they are doing interviews and talking about. Uh, they're talking about uh, uh, to us in the interviews about these cards and the private sector. They're saying citizens are to use these and learn about the advantages. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what the uh, monetary reform education is doing. It's teaching the citizens. I tell him, uh, just like we predicted, just like we predicted, Walking Stick and I, we told you that the CBI is next to talk. We told you that they would talk this week and they are educating you on the monetary reform with these cards that are associated to the ATM machines that they've already educated you about with their banking services. Stop and think about it, Eddie. Why in the world would they be educating you about this high technology of banking services for a program rate? As far as the UN and the US representatives, <laughs> who cares? As far as the UN and US representatives, who cares? <laughs> uh, Eddie says that uh, banks are. Whoa. It's cool. It's... Well, I'll edit it. I'll, uh... Hold on, fam. Frank Eddy says that the banks are putting signs in their windows. Out. Again. I don't always tell you everything. Frank Eddy says that the banks are putting signs out again in their windows about the open house that they are inviting us citizens to next Monday. You see why these uh, UB2Bs are important? <laughs> Praise God. So next Monday, they, the CBI is inviting us to an open house. And they're telling the citizens to come in. Come in. Hurry up. <laughs> They're telling us to come in and to open accounts registered. They tell us, get your accounts and cards. They're talking about loan banks that will be providing low interest. They're talking about loan banks that will be providing low interest rates. All different services that are now new to us as citizens of Iraq. All of this is a part of a new strategy to grow Iraq's economy recovery from the banking sector involving the private sector and citizens. Remember, it must not fail with who? It's all new, new part of new strategy.
to grow Iraq's economy recovery from the banking sector involving the private sector and citizens. Remember, it must not fail with who, family? Thank you, Galway girl. The citizens. Did you hear what I read to you twice? That's why. Today, 2.32 in the... Did I show it to you? I don't even know if I... Why not? You did the open house. Thanks, babe. Uh, I respond and tell him the following at 2.32. Eddie, uh, the CBI prepares you to use the new small category notes inside of your country. You know that. In the same way that they have prepared you, or excuse me, that the way the, excuse me, in the same way that they have prepared the international banks to use the new small category notes in their country outside of Iraq's borders internationally. Yes, Mr. Frank, it's exciting. Eddie asked earlier how much longer this is going to go on. Can you blame Eddie? How much longer is this going to go on? Something has to happen. People suffering. I told him, Frank, a lot is going on behind closed doors. Frank can only tell you as it comes out slowly. He also said he, he will send you all of the pictures. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, but he's, but it seems slow. It's 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 very low. It's very slow. It's like downtime. Where's the action? Neil, tell Eddie. Tell him, the next step will occur after Kazimi returns from New York. Let's stop there. Did you like your conference call? I hope so. I pray that we helped you. I pray that, that we were constructive and, and useful. Take everything that we said to you tonight to God in prayer and determine whether or not you, know, you want to rely on it or you want to throw it away. Thank you kindly for being with us. I, um, I'm looking forward to the government being announced. Probably sometime, in my opinion, maybe we're like around the 28th. I don't know. But then, uh, if we have a seated government, golly, let's open up all the private banks around the world for the CBI. Okay. Come on in. They took out the no vacancy sign. Come on in. <laughs> okay. And then, uh, the, the, the dinar would just have to, uh, you know, float. It, it, it hitches a ride with the dollar at one to one, but then it depegs from it, and it it will determine if it wants to go in a basket at that time or not. I really don't know if they will, but they probably will when they mature to the three plus range, and that won't take long. <laughs> that won't take long. Everybody wants to take this pretty girl out on a date. <laughs> God bless you. I love you. I thank you kindly for being with us. You have yourself a safe night tonight. And I'll be with you again next uh, month. It's our next UB2. Yes, Tink? Would you like the shofar if Gary is here? Do I want the shofar blown? Yes, indeed. Gary, are you there? Uh, Brother Gary hits. Can you hear me? There you go. Hold, hold on just a second and then blow the shofar, okay? You hear me, Gary? Hey, Gary. I hear you. I'm, I'm getting the shofar right now. Ah, right, right, ro out. roger that. Okay. Uh, I hear you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you kindly for being with me. May the grace of God fall upon you and your families. May you be helped and healed in anything that that is hurting you right now, that is troubling you. May the, may the Holy Spirit dwell within you and your family, and may you be graced. May you be loved. Follow the path of Jesus Christ, family. Follow the light. Go towards the light. In the name of the Jesus Christ, I pray by the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 
Be blessed, family, by the blowing of the shofar. Go, Gary. time I hear that, Gary, I, 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 I referenced, you know, to the scriptures, I can just see that, I can just see that lamb that was, uh, that was in the thickness, you know, in the, in the, in the twigs, uh, that was used to sacrifice instead of, uh, David, Abraham was going to sacrifice his son. And I can just hear the the, tr the 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 horn. I can just hear it blowing in the heavens above, celebrating, Amen. celebrating that Abraham did the right thing. How pleased God was, and all the musical from the harp to the shofar, all the musical, the sim the symbols, everything that the Bible tells us about that they made a joyful noise unto the Lord. Thank you, Gary. I love you. God bless you. And thank all of you for coming for us. Thank you very, very much. I uh, will see you again on our next UB2B, which is this coming Monday at uh, uh, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Y'all take care of each other, pray for each other, love each other, lift each other, support each other, visit each other. Until then, ahui ho. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Goodbye. Yeah. What's that in your pocket? I don't have any pockets. What's in your pocket? <laughs> <laughs>